Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast covers everything tech. The hottest mobile phones, tablets, games. We review it, rate it, test it. Whether you're Microsoft or Apple, Android or iPhone, we'll give it to you. Again and again. Black and white. The Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Technology Podcast. It is a Tuesday and uh, my name is Tom Doherty, your host. As always, this broadcast is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. This week is a big one in the tech world. It is the WWDC going on right now as uh, that is the major developer conference for Apple as they will be unveiling throughout the week or throughout the conference at least. Uh, what we'll be seeing come the fall with the new iOS, what we're going to see with the new phones and everything uh, that's comes has to do with software and what their developers will be doing. It's kind of the, the joke they make when they when they have this conference is that it's the first time the developers have come out of their caves and are actually seeing uh, the light of day, <laughs> having to go to this uh, event because they've been in their coding and in their houses or wherever they may be on there, wired into their computers, make creating these uh, great features for us to use uh, on the Apple devices. And actually in this first, in this first uh, segment, actually, before we really go into the WWDC, what happened, we're actually going to go through what they didn't announce yesterday uh, at the first day. So it's going to be what they did announce yesterday. So, um, there was a few different things. Obviously, they really wanted to come out and show what Siri can do, the changes to the AI and everything. I know we're still kind of waiting and seeing if the if Google and uh, Amazon are going to get a kick in the teeth when it comes to the uh, HomePod and the old home uh, smart home devices. Uh, whether it, we're going to see Apple really step it up on that, or is this going to kind of be what what it's going to be, and they're going to really focus on the personal assistant on your phone. Then that's that's kind of what the, what the way they want to go. That, that's the one thing that does remain to be seen uh, is remain to be seen is what their Apple is really going to push forward with the with their Home Pods and the advancement and trying to uh, beat Amazon and Google at their own game kind of thing like that we've seen them do time and time again with uh, the iPhone and uh, the AirPods and uh, the Watch and everything. So let's go through some things actually first when we uh, talk about the new iOS 12. They'll be uh, coming out obviously uh, in the end around the end of the year. Not, I mean, usually around September, October, right? When they bring the phones out. So, uh, when it comes to this iOS 12, obviously they didn't really want to. They weren't really going to go into the huge, all the different Nick t- Nicky Knack presentations. I think they're going to go in that and do it uh, when they have the bigger uh, unveiling of the phone down later with the other conferences they have or Mac World or whatever they're going to do. Uh, down there in September, but uh, as for as far as right now, we do know that they are going to be changing some stuff and uh, allowing actually more of a third party when it comes to password autofills. I know there's already the Apple. You can and when you come into the keychain, you can you can give it access to remembering your passwords and it can autofill passwords for you. It uh, looks like now that they actually um, are working with another uh, third party um, password manager. This is one of them. Uh, is called One Password, and uh, they have a service now where it looks like you probably could just go in and put all your passwords in and it'll automatically uh, save them all for you and as a iOS 12 will allow uh, yeah to allow the developers to gain to the new API that will um, will give give access to a third party uh, password manager to outfill all your passwords so that's pretty cool there uh, I mean the thing with that the thing with that is yes yeah, so it's like every time it's like, oh do you want me, do you want to remember this thing do you want to add it to your keychain do you want to add it to, do you want to add it to this I mean if you don't feel comfortable with the Apple keychain manager or whatever there uh, in, Apple's integrated keychain uh, to manage your passwords. You can always use uh, another service now. Is there's a com- there's now developers and com- well, I don't know what to call them companies, but uh, now there's now there's now one thing that kind of kind of just you know go handle your passwords. <laughs> Next one, uh, an improved app switcher. So it looks like that um, obviously when you double with that uh, with the new phones, there's no home button, so you have like switch uh, kind of a swipe a weird swipe up gesture. Um, obviously, when you had the button, if you have a phone with a button still, you just double click uh, 
that button and you can uh, it'll pull up all your apps but with this app switcher it looks like that in the ios um you don't need to wait uh in ios 12 you no longer need to uh, press on the app card and wait for the uh x to appear i mean obviously before you close you just can swipe up and we've kind of been seeing that when you close the when you're closing apps and everything like that um Obviously, if you uh, on the uh, on the iPhones, I think the new iPhone on the iPhone tens, you have to actually click every X. I know in the old iPhones, you just can swipe up like you normally would, but I think they're going back to that with the iPhone ten. Uh, on the uh, on the new ones on the iOS twelve, you can now actually uh, have with this third with these uh, more third party uh, availability with these from these uh, third party managers, um, you can actually. Uh, just like when you autofill a password, you can now autofill one of those uh, verification codes. So, I mean, if you like, if you guys are whether you're using a, a, a link a keychain kind of thing, or you know, pass key to get into your email, or you're, you forgot your password for for Facebook or whatever it may be, whatever things. I mean, everything needs a password these days, and they actually, you know, they send you a, a code to put in. It looks like that now iOS 12 will be able to autofill those codes for you, actually. So it's going to be able just to get it from i mean if they send you a text it'll be able to go retrieve it from your messages and then put throw it right into that field so you don't have to go copy and paste or remember what the code is or re and retry and uh rescribe it back to the uh where, where i mean to that little field that you need to in order to get to the next to the next part of your of, of what you need to do when, when recovering your password or whatever it may be getting into the next um the page uh, as well uh, there's going to be on the ipad obviously when it comes to the home buttons they're going to be going away uh, on the iPad as well as uh, like we've seen on the phones, which means we're going to see some new gestures on the iPad. Obviously, uh, probably pretty similar to what we see on the iPhone 10. Uh, as a, yeah, you're going to see that gesture-based navigation throughout the iPad, uh, the new iPads that are coming out in iOS 12. It uh, looks like the swipe up from the bottom of the screen, just like on the on the old phones. Uh, on the, I mean, sorry, on the old phones, the iPhone tens, uh, the newest phone, uh, will bring you back home and the swipe down, uh, just like the, like just like on the ten from the top corner, will give you the control panel, and uh, so it looks like that they're getting rid of that iPad home button, just like they are uh, with the uh, with the phones, which means obviously iPads will be getting Face ID as well. Uh, with the animations, I know that uh, they're going to be improving that. They've gotten a lot more stuff going with these developers to try and get these uh, animations to run faster, whether it's uh, through the lock screen or opening the camera. Um, obviously, that's kind of things that we're seeing all uh, problems with the phones. I know my phone, as it's kind of getting a little a more aged, everything kind of all the little movements to get from app to app or when it opens up, like I said, open up the camera, it might take a little bit longer. It uh, looks like that the keyboard will be popping up 50% faster, which, I mean, uh, doesn't sound like that much, but I think it actually people will um, notice the difference. And then also uh, Apple has re has come out and reported uh, saying the apps, their apps were also are going to be launching um, up to twice as faster, uh, even under a, a heavy load or heavy uh, whatever. I mean, if you have a bunch of apps open or not, uh, you can always just close them out, like, you said, like I said, just with a swipe. You can close them out, and it'll make you faster. But uh, it doesn't look. It doesn't. Uh, we don't know though if the transitions are going to be any smoother. But it looks like the uh, load up speed and the uh, instant, uh, instantaneous uh, opening is going to be something that we're noticing uh, quickly here with these uh, with the new operating system from Apple. Also, uh, with the battery information, they're going to be coming out with a little more. Um, a little more for you, a little more information for the battery information uh, for you as obviously uh, the 11, iOS 11 does already kind of tell you a lot, but iOS 12 will also be giving you a battery usage chart uh, that gives you a section by section uh, a look at the uh, last 24 hours or 10 days that you've been using and what apps have been using the most battery and everything kind of, you know, giving you a better uh, look on what to how to gauge your usage or uh, if you're using an app too much. I know we're going to get into more stuff uh, in the next segment regarding how they are trying to get you to use your phone less, actually. And we'll definitely be talking about that, like I said, next segment. So we'll leave it for that. Uh, another one, we have another thing they didn't bring up quite at the WWDC is the new uh, additions we're seeing from the an emojis. I know that was a big, it was kind of a little fatty, big, no, I wouldn't call it a big hit, honestly. Uh, I think they were trying to, they were thinking they were going to go over a little better than they thought. Thought. These emojis. I know it was kind of a fad thing 
everybody uh, we'll see what everybody what happens when everybody gets these uh everybody ends up having the iphone 10 you can have everybody has the facial recognition and be able to make these and emojis and everything but uh they are adding a wink feature so now you not only can it understand what you're saying and talk back to you with the mouth moving it'll wink back to you if you wink at it so uh, or a w- it'll record your wink and put it out there on a message. So if you, if you're talking as a monkey, it'll wink if you talked. I mean, if you w- it'll wink if you winked. Uh, just it'll mimic you uh, in that way, <laughs> which is just funny. They had to throw that in there. I'm like looking through. I'm like, oh, all these things they didn't announce. This is, of course, this is a very important, uh, a very important thing. The winking from the N emojis. Uh, also, the AR scene reflection. It uh, looks like through this uh, AR kit too. It looks like that it's a pretty pretty cool uh, little form uh, thing here. You're going to share files uh, to other people to be able to look at an object uh, for multiple uh, vantage points in 3D. So um, that's pretty cool. Obviously, it didn't say uh, how it's integrated into the into the physical surroundings, but it looks like that the, with the world world around them, you can actually look at it from different vantage points when you share uh, it out with multiple people. Uh, on the portrait mode, that's been improved on the uh, iPhone. Uh, I mean, on the, in iOS uh, in iOS 12. I know with the iPhone 7 Plus first came out, it was like, oh, there's two cameras, and obviously we've now um, made that camera vertical uh, instead of horizontal. But uh, with the dual lens camera, it looks like they're going to be uh, some new additions and uh, improvements to that portrait mode. Where now we're going to be uh, being able to. I mean, you're not going to do it. It's going to do it by itself, pretty much. But the, what is happening is actually they're using layer masks and uh, better te- better technologies to se- literally select and separate the subject out of the foreground and kind of ma- uh, make it almost like it's two different images. And you're literally blurring out the background and separating and pulling, really pulling forward that foreground image so it looks really vivid in the front and it gives you that nice, uh, that nice blur in the background, which is what kind of the whole point of the portrait mode is, as um, it'll look really nice and intelligently and elegant. Uh, yeah, elegantly, intelligently and elegantly, as Apple likes to put it, uh, separating them from the from the scene. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then lastly, I think this is the last one. Of the things they didn't announce, we're going to come back with things that they did announce in the next segment. Uh, but they're going to be improving the uh, battery features. So oh, we talked about battery features, uh, the password, the password features. Uh, so, like I said, the the one password where it it has your password for you and it automates a new one for you every time you log in or something like that. Whatever. I mean, one password does it has a couple of things, but you have to, not everybody wants to pay to have that kind of encryption. Uh, so it looks like that on the iOS 12, uh, you can now automatically create passwords that are considered stronger or strong passwords um, and uh, put them in your keychain. So you don't have to use the same password for everything. Uh, I know there's people out there who literally use the same password and it's the simplest password. They use it for every single like email, banking, social media, everything, Netflix, everything. And it's just not good. So I mean, what, on this new feature, you can actually have it where it'll generate a, a strong password for you and then you don't even have to know it. You know, it'll remember it for you every time, anyways. So, um, if of course it's it, you authenticate your the user, but um, if somebody is trying to like you know get access to your stuff from something else, it's not gonna they're never gonna know because you, you don't even know. <laughs> it's only the Google Keychain. I mean, only the Apple at Google, only the Apple Keychain knows uh, what your password is because it generated a, a strong password for you. Uh, it'll probably tell you, but the whole point is that is it for you to generate some password and then it puts it in your keychain, so you don't have to remember it anyways. But it is there uh, as a protection because uh, there's nobody really going to figure out who it is anyway. So it looks like uh, when it comes to the reusing these passwords, um, it looks like the yeah. See, it also flags you when when you use multiple passwords and re or reuse a, a password you've used within the last few times which i think there's actually there's some sites that won't even let you use a password you've you've used within the last two or three times uh if you change your password that many times i know we've had we have uh, safeguards like that, but this is now a feature where it's all, it's all built in for you. That's kind of, I think that's where we're, I mean, obviously where we're going now. There's all these third party things that we all could use. Like I know Google has all these extensions and stuff like that. Apple has been really trying to integrate everything and, you know, they get these developer conferences going and they're more and more, um, transparent with their, with their third party developers or m- maybe giving them more leeway, giving them more of a leash when it comes to how much they're going to let them put in this phone, these phones or add to the iOS, kind of make it, make it 
it part of Apple. Um, but Apple is definitely trying to build everything in versus you having to go out and get something and add it on as like a plug in or an add on kind of thing. They're trying to build as much stuff into their iOS as possible to uh, make your life easier for their all their consumers, which is nice. So we're going to come back and talk about more stuff from the uh, WDBC and Apple especially regarding Siri and uh, some stuff regarding the new iOS 12 and uh, all that good stuff like that, especially the uh, stuff when it comes to monitoring your usage and uh, trying to get you to go to bed. All right, we'll do that when we come back. healthier yet you just don't know what to do all these shows telling you this and that but nothing seems to work well listen close golden state media concepts has got something great for you the health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends healthy eating habits diet and everything about healthy living join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest but live it to the healthiest All right, welcome back to GSMC Technology Podcast. As we're now going to go through some stuff that actually was talked about during the uh, conference yesterday in San Jose. As uh, the some of the bigger announcements was the fact that uh, they are going to plan to release software next year in 2019 that allows uh, all iPhone apps to run on your Mac computers. And I know that uh, whether it's the whole idea with the fact that Mac is going bye bye. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, everybody's like, okay, laptops are going anyways, going out of town anyways. I mean, it's going to be a few years, but we're, that's the kind of the direction we're going. Where it's all about the tablets, and obviously, the Apple is really pushing the fact that these uh, their their iPads are basically a laptop. I mean, you've probably seen the commercial with the like, girl on the iPad Pro doing all her homework and writing an essay and doing a pres- PowerPoint presentation and everything. And, um, Somebody's like, "What's what? Uh, what are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, on my lap." It's like, "What's a laptop?" Like, kind of. She's like, "This isn't a laptop. This is my. This is everything. Uh, it has a keyboard and everything." So they're going away. Obviously, I think next time I buy, if I bought a laptop, I wouldn't buy a laptop. I'd buy an iPad Pro with the keyboard and the pencil, probably, uh, because it just is so much more functional. If you don't like, if I don't want to have to use my laptop as a actual keyboard, I could just take it off and use it as a tablet and write on it or whatever. And uh, having to hold my laptop in my on my lap and everything. Anyway, so it looks like that. Obviously, Apple, they're just like you know, might as well. We're gonna throw these iPhone apps on the Mac, make it a little more fun. As it, uh, like I mean, we're saying uh, the whole. Th- the, the, we're, I'm seeing reports all over the place. It's like, oh yeah, they're they're trying to put these uh, iPhone apps on the Mac just to uh, save the life of the laptop a little bit longer, uh, even though it's not gonna work. <laughs> it's it's gonna go bye bye anyways. The smartphone is pretty much uh, the fu- the future. Obviously, tablets are as well. But now we're seeing so much more uh, being able to be done on the smartphones. I mean, these smartphones are basically like the laptops we had 10 years ago. They're the processors on them, the capabilities in them. Uh, I mean, I I remember back when I didn't have my... I, didn't, I mean, I didn't even use a laptop by senior year in college. I had an iPad that I used as basically my laptop. And I've even written part of a, a paper on my phone. Not, not joking. Like literally a uh, voice control... Uh, dictated it into my phone, which was pretty interesting, uh, having to go edit that. But um, yeah, this looks like that uh, the fact that they've sold, I mean, Apple 12 times as many iPhones as Macs, 12 times. I mean, they sold a lot of phones um, and a lot of computers too, but 12 times as many. And obviously uh, the fact that uh, uh, they're, 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 Putting these uh, the, is going to beg the question of I mean when they when they put these apps on the Mac, like, oh, are you just going to get rid of Mac OS or are we just doing iOS now? Or are you can merge them? What's going on? They came out and definitively said no, they're not merging them. Uh, but with this, um, I think they're going away from the the. I know it used to be Mac. All the Mac OSs used to be like a a uh, physical area, like they had Yosemite or in Sierra. And El Capitan, I don't know. I think the new one is going to be called something a bit different. Uh, but it looks like that you can use, like I said, you can use your iPhone apps on your uh, Mac computers. 
Uh, also, I mean, it's going to be obviously trying to push people to maybe go on to Mac now, be, seeing that you can actually use your... I mean, I like that. I like that addition. If I still had a Mac, I would be cool because, I mean, basically any app you want on to your, on your... Or not any app, but most apps that you have on your phone because, I mean, that's the point. Like, instead of having to Google or go online and look up plane tickets or look up movie tickets or look up, uh, I mean, I guess say ticket, literally tickets for anything, uh, shows or games or whatever. Uh, you go on an app. If you want to look up, uh, uh, buy, order something, you don't go www.amazon.com. You go on the Amazon app. If you want to go look up your, your the score for your favorite team, you don't go to www.espn.com. You go to the ESPN app. You go, uh, if you want to reserve a parking spot, you don't go to the uh, website. You go to Parking Panda or whatever parking app you use. If you go, if you want to look for a job, you don't go to monster.com. You use the Monster app. You use Indeed app. You use LinkedIn app. It's all an app. Every, all, all these websites now have apps. I mean, every store has an app. I mean, you don't go type in uh, fun games to waste time on Google. You just download one on your phone. So uh, whether they're trying to get people to be able to do that, have that, I mean, that's the, that's the way it ended up just happening. People just ended up going that direction where it's all right in front of you. Like I'm looking at my phone right now, all my apps on my phone. I don't have to go look up hotels.com. I just have an app for it. I don't have to uh, go to mapquest.com or Google Maps. It's right there on my phone. I don't have to go to Expedia. I don't have to go. I mean, you can look up your credit on an app with uh, with just fine. You can look up, I mean, anything. You could you could schedule tweets to go out. You don't have to. I mean, Twitter obviously has an app, but you don't have to. You think, okay, what if I want to put this tweet out tomorrow? There's Hootsuite, which is an app. I mean, everything, all these things, obviously, you have websites connected to them, but the fact that we're now getting these much more user-friendly, streamlined, um, mobile... I mean, this thing is, it's usually made for mobile, so it's all kind of compressed, obviously, for a smaller screen, and the fact that we're going to see that now, uh, I think that's the first, the first time we actually saw that on a computer, or at least I remember on like a desktop or a PC or Mac, even a Mac, like a Mac, is the how they simplified doing your taxes, that's the first time I actually really saw this kind of like, you know, the simplified, most more refined kind of like quote unquote app style on a computer is when they made taxes a lot. I mean, they try to simplify you uh, doing your tax returns uh, and uh, making it really easy, whether you're using TurboTax or H&R Block, or whatever. Uh, that's the first time. So now we're trying, maybe we're, they took a little book out of that. It's like, you know, why don't we just do everything like that? Why don't we just have apps on our laptops? Just make the... Just tell the developers to, instead of making it like a web-based thing, just make it all for quote-unquote mobile, but just make it for a bigger screen. I mean, you have iPad apps that are basically, I mean, that are going to fill up that entire iPad Pro, which is, I think, what, 14 or 13, 13.2 or 11.9 inches, which is basically, the, they have a MacBook Air this size, or a MacBook, I don't know what they, they're just a MacBook uh, now. You change the names of them so often, but they have them with the screens that size. <laughs> they have them like that. I don't know why you just, I mean, that's why you just stick an iPad Pro, hook it to a keyboard and call it a day. Uh, but you know, that's, it's interesting now. They're, they're trying to save a few more years on the, uh, on the old laptop by throwing these apps that we're so used to using now with our phones. I mean, you don't go to www.uber.com. You just use your Uber app. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't even use a laptop. I don't, I don't go on my, I don't go on the computer. I have, everything's a tablet. Uh, your news. I mean, the only thing I would maybe go on YouTube. Now it works beautifully on the mobile. Yeah, YouTube used to be a little more, a little sticky, a little, a little funky on the phones. It was more actually better to go to YouTube.com. Now, nope. YouTube TV, YouTube Red, whatever you premium, music, know whatever you want. All on, all on your phone. We all talked about that. Whatever you want. All right. I do want to talk about some of these uh, new features uh, as more of them as I did my rants on the fact that they're putting apps on the on the phone, on the computer. But uh, uh, I know that Apple and people are thinking that they're going after Facebook and or going after Google, whatever. You think that, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> they They should go after Facebook a little bit because Apple has been the company company that literally is the opposite of when it comes to data and like how they treat your data, treat your data. And, um, they treat it nicely. They're very nice to your data. They, they actually randomize it and, uh, anonymize it 
very efficiently. And uh, like I've talked about before, when it comes to this, oh, oh, the maybe which is probably I think also it's why their AI is uh, in second or third place behind Google and Amazon because they have all this data that they use to increase their AI capabilities. Uh, the iPhone doesn't really do. I mean, the Apple doesn't do that. They anonymize all this data, like I've talked about before. They don't use individual data points to uh, input into the algorithm for their AI. They use massive, like you know, groups of trend, kind of, kind of, you know, quote unquote trends, kind of things, where they use massive data pools of an anonymized data, uh, or I can't speak, but you know, it's anonymous data, basically. Uh, that that they use for this uh, for their AI stuff, and I mean, obviously, they've always been a company that uh, really, really prides themselves in keeping their uh, users' data uh, safe. Obviously, we, I mean, not obviously, but we, we, they're going to do more and more stuff like that. We've even seen uh, a function that has been in beta for quite some, a little bit now, where if you have your phone plugged into a uh, USB port, whether it's plugged into a computer or a lot of people are think are afraid that or oh, they're going after the the uh, the cop uh, code breaker thing where if you I mean that yeah, so you can't actually it won't transfer any information through the lightning cord whether it's you like to if you plug into your computer if the phone hasn't been unlocked within an hour so if uh, yeah like you're trying to wipe it or something or if you steal somebody's phone and you have they haven't unlocked it within an hour, you ain't going to get anything out of that phone. It's going to go in. It's, it's it's done. So uh, that's something they've done bef- done for that. And I think people are like, oh, they're going to do that so they don't have to. So the cops can't break into the iPhones anymore. I'm like, eh. I think it's just to show that they uh, really don't want you to break into their. They don't want you to breach their. Uh, they don't want to breach uh, breach the, your data basically. No, no, no data breach. I know there was a big talk of a big part of the uh, WWDC uh, conference was the privacy thing, something that Google totally did not talk about whatsoever. Um, I know that uh, there were different little snippets of uh, what was talked about yesterday that people were like, okay, that was directly towards fa- Facebook. Okay, that was directly towards Facebook. Uh, obviously, with the um, news out that. Uh, all, with all this news out stuff, Apple might be in a little bit of hot water. They I mean they're uh, one of the platforms that Facebook is uh, available on. So uh, the fact that they're trying to be like, you know what, we're different, we're better. <laughs> I'm not surprised here, as uh, they will be. They're doing that. Obviously, uh, they're coming out with some more, more all these more and more privacy stuff and social media and all these different things that are deemed a quote unquote shot across the bow at Facebook. Um, that's just pretty interesting. Uh, the Facebook, obviously, they should think that. I mean, what, what's Apple going to do? Come out with a social media site? I don't, I don't know about that. I think Facebook. They're just in two different. They're two different businesses. Obviously, they're both big tech giants, uh, big businesses that uh, have a lot of information uh, on their servers and are responsible for a lot of information. But the fact that Apple comes out and goes, "Ha ha, we do our job better than you," is is pretty funny. <laughs> Because uh, uh, the Facebook, what the problem with their problem and their developers was the fact that they allowed their developers to run wild, basically, and uh, create the create things that are not savory. I mean, uh, that's like the one. That's the one comparison. Apple does have apps. Obviously, they have developers that create apps for them. And they allow them on their stores. Uh, and are probably vetted. Versus, and then Google also had, I mean, Facebook also had apps that was available, uh, like games to play through Facebook, and they weren't vetted as well, and now they are. So um, maybe Apple's trying to push it, double down, like, you know, you really need to do it. As uh, even Tim Cook went on TV and uh, said that, that his company would never do something that Facebook did, as um, he was quoted in saying, "We care about the user experience, and we're not going to traffic into your personal in your personal life." So, yeah, Mr. Cook does not really care um, <laughs> about your personal life, and he thinks that uh, it's a quote. I think it's an impra- invasion of privacy uh, of what Facebook did as well. So, which is interesting, obviously. Uh, Cheryl Sandberg has to come out and say that, uh, and what she has to say, everything that's the a COO or a, of, of Facebook. Uh, but I mean, honestly, Facebook knows what they did, and they know what they did is wrong. But uh, as far as uh, like I said, the these new th- these new uh, updates, I know I kind of just ran right over. I'm going to come back and do a little bit more talk about it in the third segment, and then uh, 
we're going to talk a little bit more about E3 and the preview of that, some games coming out uh, this year, E3, big gaming conference. So everybody stay tuned for that. We're going to come back and do some more talk on Apple and the WWDC and do some E3 match that might leak over to the fourth segment as well. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. All right, welcome back to GSMC Technology Podcast on a Tuesday here, a week of the WWDC, which is the big developer conference down in San Jose for Apple, as uh, they did announce a couple different things. Uh, now you can start accessing more and more apps with Siri. I know Siri was only compatible with uh, with the... A couple different apps, and not, not I mean, d- different apps and everything uh, that they have. But now we have some different Siri shortcuts uh, that are going to be available down in um, down in September when you have the new iOS 12 come out, as uh, the uh, the annual WWDC conferences come out. And as I said, obviously, there's some updates with these uh, animojis. Now you can have a personal animoji where it's called a me a me emoji, where it's like kind of like the. Uh, same thing with the AR Samsung AR emoji or the whether I mean Snapchat. You can create your own emo- create your own little. Um, I think they call it a. What do they call that thing? Um, hold on, I have to go check now because I'm bl- completely blinking on what uh, what the bit. Mo- oh, it's called a bit emoji. That's right, a bit emoji. Now you got a me emoji. <laughs> That's just all these different things. Uh, now with Apple, is that they have their me emoji coming out uh, with the new. With the and that's all through I obviously iMessage and everything. When it comes into so the Siri shortcuts, that's one I really wanted to get to now is the Siri shortcuts and how it's going to help you on your daily life. Obviously, uh, now I kind of you know you think all with these uh, Home Pods and everything, you pretty much can tell um, Alexa to do pretty much anything you want if you have all your stuff connected to your home and everything, or uh, the Google Google Home if you have the smart home and everything, you can tell Hey Google, turn off the lights, or Hey Google. S- Start the dishwasher or whatever it might be. It uh, looks like now with the Siri shortcuts, like I said, it has more. It has more of the uh, compatibility with multiple apps. So, like I said, there are uh, different things when it comes to the simplest thing. As far as when you're in a movie theater, it'll remind you to turn off your ringer, or it'll um, it'll remind you to call your mom on her birthday, or it'll text you. Um, uh, a meeting, it'll give you a, a text, you a, an optimization of your schedule if you're running late or something like that. And then also, um, you can now try, you can now also tell Siri to do your order uh, or your, your usual order for coffee. Uh, I think that whether it's through the Starbucks app or whatever they might do, um, you can uh, do. Th- I mean, there's different f- short shortcuts for everything. I think they're trying to integrate this with the home pod because it's um, obviously. Uh, with the with, whether it's going to be running from the Apple Watch, iPad, iPhone, or the HomePod, you're going to want to talk to sh- Siri and have these quick little shortcuts and quick commands, um, however you'd like. So it's going to be kind of like those skills you can teach Alexa, you can teach Siri the same kind of things. Um, there's different things as such as uh, find my keys, order groceries. Uh, you can tell Siri it's game time. Uh, there'll be different different tons of different things you could download uh, in addition to the uh, to these. Um, <laughs> to these shortcuts as well and you can create some of them yourself too so i mean it's pretty cool um as we're gonna we can go through some of the bigger features that they did they actually did announce during the uh during the wwdc obviously ios 12 is the big deal uh it's going to be updated on all your phones and ipads by the end of the year here um 
Another thing is the FaceTime groups. I didn't want to get to that. You can now FaceTime with 32 of your closest friends all at once. Um, you can uh, also put your, whether it's the do not disturb mode on, uh, like I was actually going to get to this um, in a minute, but I do, did just see it. I want to talk on my notes. I'm like, mm, do not disturb mode. You can actually set all different apps on do not disturb and it will actually time, time you on uh, how much time you're spending in each app. And especially with sleep stuff, it, you, set up, you can set up sleep timer for different things as well. So um, I think... I did read where you can set it on different apps and it'll actually will cl- tell you like, okay, you're done with this app. Like it's trying to get you to use your phone less basically. And it's going to try and bring to the forefront how much time we all, we spend on each app every day. I mean, I know I use probably, it's a reflex. Just every time I uh, open my phone, check Twitter, check Instagram, boom, just like that's 20 minutes or 15 minutes right there. Yeah, every time up, not every time, but uh, you know, it's 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 interesting. Obviously, with the um, with these new uh, with these new things and every with these new things we see with these updates, it's pretty interesting to see what they're what they was decided to do next. I think the an emojis are a pretty big deal. Obviously, with the like I said, it'll wink at you. It'll it you can make your own. Me emoji and everything. Like I said, the group FaceTime up to, up to 32 people uh, to one FaceTime call. And you can also um, start a FaceTime with members of, from a existing group chat. So I mean, that's actually pretty cool. So if I could say like me, I have a group chat with like 10 people from school and we could all literally set a start a, a, a FaceTime uh, all at once, 10 way FaceTime if we want to. Obviously, um, you can do up to 32 people. We have a 32 way FaceTime. Uh, all right. Uh, again, and obviously with that with that um, FaceTime feature, it looks like they're going to have little squares, and it'll be able to tell what they uh, what, it, who's talking and enlarge their face on the f- screen uh, based off who's talking, so you can focus on them. And you also, of course, you could throw your emojis on there if you prefer somebody to look at your koala face or your the, the emoji you made with your little cowboy hat. Um, you can uh, you can do that as well. All right. Uh, with the survey notifications, I to talk about that with the shortcuts feature. Obviously, it's going to be providing you information and then services throughout your day. Obviously, it's going to be able to tell you different reports, weather, uh, ETAs. Uh, there, was, there was an example they gave during the conference, which was like it can give you a surf report. It'll give you the current weather. It'll tell you how long it, gets to, it takes to get to the beach, and it'll remind you to put on your sunscreen. <laughs> and that was what they used as an example uh, during the conference. But uh, obviously, it's just one of the many different things that uh, we're going to be able to do and see especially as well as uh, definitely the uh, things on your schedule obviously so uh, you can add, ask Siri Siri what are my travel plan- plans and you can say all right your hotel's here and you can check in at this time so it could, it's really going to be telling you what you can and can't do and what you should and shouldn't be doing whether it's I don't think it's going to just be assisting you in your life basically it's supposed to be a virtual assistant that's the whole point um, and uh, will you talk to it now and be, having it be more and more Having to be more and more integrated to you, recognize your voice, to give you better responses. I mean, there's a, I don't know how many times I've asked Siri something. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do that. So it's going to be less of that and more of, yeah, seriously, Siri, here's what I can do. It looks like that um, they even uh, have ways that if you tell Siri, hey, Siri, help me relax, it'll give you better ways to... Uh, better ways to do that as well. So it'll give you like, you know, a little tutorial on what way to deep breaths or whatever it might be. Oh, yes. That's what it says. With the, I'm like, how was I going to do the whole find my keys? I'm assuming that it had to be a partnership or at least working with Tile, which is, of course, we know it, if you don't know what Tile is, it's a, a service that sells you these little tiles, the little um, uh, tech. I mean, they have chips in them that kind of they are their GPS. So basically, if you have them connected to your keys, have one in your wallet, you can GPS your or and you can even play a sound for you. And um or you can tell Siri to find your keys, and you'll be able to find your keys um, with with the Tile uh, app. Obviously, you just press the button, and it'll do it for you. Also, like I said, it could be programmed to respond to things like order my coffee, or I mean, I need to do that. Honestly, that's gonna be one thing for me. That's gonna be ASAP. It's gonna be like set my normal thing from Starbucks, the normal normal mobile order, and have it linked to Siri, and be like Siri, order my coffee. As I'm on the way to work every morning early to do your shows for these shows for you. Um, as far as like I said, there's that time. Like I said, with the um, 
what was it, a time check or it's going to tell you, yeah, it's going to tell you the do not disturb. I know it's kind of all part of do not disturb, but it's also got the time check. Also, uh, you can set time limits for apps. So you can help you use your phone less. Like I was saying at the beginning of the show here, uh, noting that, yeah, it's trying to get you to lose your phone, phone less. So with the time check, it's a new little ser- function they'll have on the iOS 12. It'll be its own individual app. It'll have like a little uh, uh, hourglass thing. I think it's called screen time and it'll uh, give you a, it'll it'll give you alerts saying five more minutes for Instagram today, 10 more minutes for Twitter or something like that, whatever you might be on. And you can set it to uh, that on that screen time app. Uh, you can do it however you'd like. It'll be customized that time limit for you as um, you can ignore. Obviously you can ignore it, but it'll tell you like, Hey, you spent an hour. That's me. You spent an hour on Instagram today combined. What are you doing with your life? That's a that's a one twenty fourth of well. I mean, we're not awake in twenty four hours, but say you're awake. I mean, at, at least uh, at least fourteen of those twenty four hours. I mean, no, at least sixteen of those twenty four hours, or maybe even more. Uh, you, yeah, that's one sixteenth of your of your time that you spent on on of, day, of your day on Instagram. And it will also, like I said, that screen time app will keep track of every app that you're using all the time. And uh, it'll even break it down by um, different production, uh, social networking, social networking, entertainment, productivity, and uh, total usage uh, of your phone. It'll break it down by app as well. So, which is, uh, I mean, that's uh can be pretty eye opening. So, I mean, well, it's definitely going to help you. Either it's going to help you or people, I know there's people out there who really will, this will, like I said, be eye opening and they're going to put their phones down and everything. I don't know if I'm one of those people because it, I mean, it'll tell me, I'll be like, yeah, I suck. I know I'm on, I'm on my phone too much, too bad. So sad. I'm on my phone a lot. So just deal with, I just kind of have to deal with it. But, um, or if you're somebody that gets, is, is conscious and all you need to do is be reminded, then you'll just be like, nope, put your phone down. Uh, it'll also keep track of the time. It'll also keep track of how many uh, notifications you're getting. It'll uh, calculate the average of average uh, notifications you get uh, every hour as well. So that's pretty cool. And also, there's a new feature uh, that it will help you eliminate that waste of time on social media. It's called downtime. It'll actually um, block certain apps at, between a certain period of time. So, say you want to study for two hours or study for. Uh, a certain amount of time, you can set uh, you can set your downtime for say f- four p.m. to seven p.m. and or if you're at dinner, if you don't want to have your phone, uh, you don't have to be tempted or literally you will click. You can click on an app. You can bundle all these apps together, whether it's social networking, games, or whatever. Um, you can bundle them all together and click and select that uh, that uh, you know umbrella term, and all those apps will not work. They'll block the apps during the downtime. Obviously, you can. It's not. It's not going to like no, no, no. It's not going to lock it in on you. You're the. You have to wait the whole hour. But uh, it's just training, basically. It's kind of training you to use your phone less and less. Uh, I did talk about the do not disturb thing. Uh, they, it's more now can, um, attached to your location. So if you have, like I said, the other thing, if you give a, in a meeting, you're at dinner on a date, whatever, maybe in a movie, um, you can actually set do not disturb to turn on or off whenever you're in a certain area. So uh, it's pretty cool. You can choose the specific amount of time you want it, or you can um, go by based off of uh, a, lo- you know, a location using your location services. So like it says, um, say, yeah, it's a movie. It was the example they used at the conference. And it says, oh, we detected you're using the movie. You have a movie ticket in your wallet. Do you want to, uh, do you want to turn on the do disturb while you're in this location? Until you leave this location, yes, but ma'am, yes, ma'am, Siri, thank you. I do want to do that. <laughs> uh, another thing is that the, the uh, bedtime, obviously, we do on disturb thing. The, I think we've had the bedtime for a, set, a little bit here, where you have you set your bedtime, it'll actually count down, and it'll give, it'll send you an alert when it's time to go to bed, and it'll actually it'll do not, it'll set your phone to do not disturb, so you won't get any notifications. Uh, in the morning uh, until the morning time where uh, you can um, have all your stuff pop up on your phone or like it, it would have overnight uh, calls and notifications uh, will be, would be silenced until you wake up. So it's pretty cool. And uh, all, all the other stuff will be sent in to put put into your history. I mean, I get the only thing I get notifications from in the middle of the night are like things that happen in Europe, <laughs> like soccer stuff or whatever. And then uh, also there. Uh, oh, that's cute. That, this is this is when I did star a little bit. I wanted. I, it was pretty cool. We might have to come back and talk about it on the other side of the 
break in a little bit. So we're actually, yeah, we're going to take the break really quick and we're going to come back. Um, this really cool feature, there's actually a few more of them that I want to go through from the, the WWDC that happened yesterday. So everybody stay tuned and we'll be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. All right, welcome back to GSMC Technology Podcast. Okay, this is a, this is part of the new uh, update that I is not the biggest thing like techie tech thing or it is depending on how you think i think it's awesome because i don't like measuring things i don't like tape measures i don't like any of that so now there's a measuring app that's going to be available with ios 12 where you can no longer need a measuring stick and you could actually uh use your iphone camera to measure things real life objects whether um they be three dimensional or um, well, I mean, most things are three dimensional, obviously, um, and even a piece of paper, but uh, or thinner, thin, thick, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. Uh, and you can measure different things based off the dimensions. It'll show up on your screen, and they'll give you an easily, uh, easily to understand a uh, little little picture and visualization of uh, what you're doing here. So the example they used, they had a suitcase or what like a, some sort of trunk and it was a rectangle cube so uh or just you know cubic rectangle and they were able to give you the height width and um length of it as well so uh, it was pretty cool <laughs> what they're doing there just with your phone camera you're not going to need to use uh a measuring tape pretty much I mean, unless you don't trust stuff like that which i mean some people might take a little bit to do it and see how accurate it is uh you can also use the measuring app like I said, for 2D objects, you can measure like pictures or something like that, whether it's on a piece of paper, you can uh, center, center things and such. So if you have a, 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 a picture of something, you can measure how big the frame, like, you know, how big the actual picture is versus the matting or whatever. So you want to fit in, fit it in a frame as well. Like I said, I'm like, most things are 3D. There's some 2D things and it'll measure that for you as well. All right. As we continue looking up here at these uh love i mean these are all i think the they kind of did obviously go i think they went a little too deep into the uh into the uh fact that this animoji thing is a big deal i know it's a big deal but um they have um i mean so many more more and more things i think the i mean the whole first half of the show i went over things that we didn't have they didn't actually announce but then of course i go uh, I go through and do like 20 more things that they actually did announce, which is crazy. So um, we're going to come back. I did want to, there's a couple more things I wanted to go over regarding uh, stuff that they announced yesterday before I do quickly go and talk about uh, the E3 preview. I don't want to do, say too much about it. I'm going to say the measuring app and then that was that it on the measuring app. That one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use that thing a lot. Honestly, I'm kind of, I don't know why. I just I don't need to measure that much stuff, but I feel like I would use that thing a lot. All right, quickly into the E3 th- um, E3. As uh, there obviously is a big deal coming out. That is a big deal happening next week. Uh, it's the biggest week in games. As uh, we're gonna be seeing all sorts of stuff. Obviously, uh, major games that are gonna be that have been announced within within the last month. Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, Black, Battlefield 5, Rage 2, Fallout 76, Pokemon, Let's Go, Assassin's Creed, Odyssey. I mean, those are all major blockbuster games that are all going to be um, talked about during that E3 conference. I think we're going to have some stuff from Sony, some stuff from uh, Microsoft as well uh, that are going to be coming out uh, as far as, obviously, we knew that uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 and uh, the... 
the uh, Destiny, Far Cry 5, Destiny 2, like I said, uh, that was last year. Some things that came out, obviously, they obviously talked about the iPhone, uh, the i. Uh, iPhone, the uh, Xbox One X, and everything is that was that's how that's how but that's uh, how big it was last year. This year it's going to be even bigger. I don't know if we're going to be seeing the kind of consoles that we saw, but as far as these games that we're going to be seeing, uh, it is going to be pretty cool. As uh, uh, we're seeing all these different gaming uh, uh, trailers and stuff like that, where we got a first look. We're going to get a first look at the Avengers game. Whether it's uh, the, I know they used. The uh, same kind of developers from Rise of the Tomb Raider and uh, from uh, Doyce X Mankind Divided, so uh, we're going to get probably the similar kind of game bo- gameplay there for those ones. But we're it's obviously creating this game after Infinity Wars comes out, and uh, they're using that branding obviously uh, to push that one. As far as um, the Xbox names, Halo is a big is a big thing. Gears of War and Forza, uh, all are all are due to for releases. Obviously, Halo Six um, has been something that we talked about a little bit on the show. As far as what we're going to be hearing from E3, has been rumors surrounding every at all. Uh, whether we're going to be here, we're going to hear about it during the conference is going to be. It still remains to be seen, but that's definitely something that uh, we're likely going to be likely going to see. Obviously, Microsoft. Um, whether they have anything to show, see she see if thieves was a good uh, a good little direction for them as they and I mean going with this whole that free to download everything kind of thing with Fort, like we're seeing with Fortnite and players on Battlegrounds Microsoft does see of thieves which they bundled uh, with all of their new or most they did that was like the most pushed bundle that uh, they included that game with all the new Xbox One X's or S's I think it was Sea of Thieves or. I think that was one of the only big ones they did, so that was a good, a good idea there for them. But uh, it looks like that um, getting it back into their old bag of tricks, I think, would not be a bad idea. As we have yet to, we have yet, haven't seen a Gears of War, haven't seen a Forza, and haven't seen a Halo uh, for quite some time. Is I think they're due. We're due for some uh, throwback, familiar faces from Microsoft because those were darn good games. Um, we're also going to see if there's a little battle going on between. I mean, there's Battlefront. And then, obviously, which is uh, EA's, EA's EA's thing, and obviously we have a Battlefield Five as well. But it looks like there's another guy, another um, game called Anthem. It's a, it's a sci-fi uh, shooter as well, the online shooter that's going to be developed by Bioware, uh, same same one that uh, did Mass Effect, and uh, obviously. Uh, with uh, the struggles that we've seen from, I mean, well, I think Destiny Two. I don't think was ever really destined to. Destiny Two was never destined to really get off the ground, and uh, with the it is struggling now. We're looking uh, to see if Anthem Anthem can fill the gap there. As uh, looks like EA will try to. Obviously, they're trying to battle that. EA has always been that um, big bad wolf when it comes to the gaming developing. They are pretty much their hands are in every single slice of pie, slice of the pie. Uh, whether it's sports or they trying to re- uh, reboot this Battlefront franchise, which they've done. I mean, the first one has is out and it's been out. They've come out with another one, and it's been out. And it's it, it, I don't think it was quite the hype they really wanted to get, but they've sold enough. And uh, looks like the EA is trying to uh, do this with Anthem as they are a little more player friendly uh, experience w- with this game. Obviously, it won't uh, won't. Uh, be stopping when it comes to Battlefield Five, though. They are rolling with that guy hard um, there. So that's what we have to expect, honestly. Uh, um, the when it comes when all these stuff comes to fruition and we actually get some reports and we we actually get some announcements regarding games that are going to be coming out, uh, then we can start really talking about what to expect from these games. Obviously, we already know what the Black Ops Four is going to be coming out. We're going to see. I think that. But, they always, I mean, you can't fault. I mean, not can't fault. You can't, you can't, uh, can't think that Call of Duty isn't going to impress with that game. I mean, the Black Ops series versus, I mean, we've gone from modern warfare to advanced warfare to, I mean, soon we're, soon we're going to get a cyber warfare game where we're just going to be, uh, coding <laughs> on our Xboxes. But no, uh, with these Black Ops games, you can't only expect good uh, greatness. I mean, everybody can get in their little tit for tat kind of things. Oh, I didn't like this. I didn't like that. Or that wasn't great, or whatever. Oh, that house didn't blow up, or that zombie wasn't accurate, or whatever it was. You can come up with it. But usually, these games are world class games, 
And uh, the fact that we saw an NBA player wear like a hat that could have been the logo for this game, and then it was like, oh my god, they're coming out with uh, Black Ops Four. James Harden wore the Black Ops Four hat, <laughs> and then of course, yes, they announced uh, we're going to be seeing Black Ops Four um, <laughs> coming out this year. So uh, I'm thinking I'm more excited for most excited for that one. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is going to be pretty cool. Uh, I've had a fun playing those Assassin's Creed games in the past. Uh, but but I think that Battlefield Five is really gonna, it's going to be that Battlefield Five versus Black Ops Four kind of thing. I th- the, the thing with Call of Duty is they have two different franchises. Uh, Battlefield only the one. Uh, Call, so Call of Duty, the fact that they have two different franchises, you have your Battlefield. You have your, I mean, you have your Battlefield fans, and then you have your Black Ops fans, and then you have your Modern Warfare fans or your Advanced Warfare fans or people who are do both. So I know there's, there's going to be plenty of people out there who are like, oh, I need to pre order everything. And then we have, of course, Pokemon. Uh, we're going to see Pokemon uh, Let's Go is going to be on the... I think that... Is that the one that's going to be on the Switch? I know that uh, uh, the that we're going to see the, the first Pokemon, yeah, Pokemon game uh, with the Switch. So it's going to be pretty cool as um, they're... With the po- the other, this is considered the other Pokemon game. Obviously, we have um, the free to play Pokemon Quest, which is uh, available on Switch. But now that's kind of like a, it's kind of like a Pokemon Go, but uh, just a little spin off kind of thing on your phone. Uh, and then you now we have Pokemon Let's Go that uh, will uh, be coming to the platform in November. And that's going to be obviously on your Switch, which is pretty cool. And, and they can't, you got to give Nintendo credit, they have. Uh, not lost a beat, basically. They've not missed a beat. I mean, they, you have these people like basically my age who grew up watching Pokemon playing on their T- DSs or Game Boys or Colors and then 3DSs all the way up. You come out with Pokemon Go, you re, re-get everybody back into the franchise, and now you have Nintendo come out with this Switch, and you're like, oh, perfect. We rebooted our franchise out of the ashes, seemingly. Well, I don't think out of the ashes. People are always into Pokemon. But... um back into the forefront of just everything pop culture. And then now we have this beautiful new console that sold exceptionally well, uh, the Nintendo switch and everybody, a lot of people have it. And now we're going to come out with this new game as, um, the, uh, Pokemon game obviously was revealed. Obviously they revealed a little bit here and there. It's not quite Nintendo. Nintendo revealed the switch last year, but, uh, with the Pokemon game, we haven't had anything, heard anything about it. Uh, since 2017, so we're going to be getting a cool look at when it comes to this uh, E3, and we're going to get some real details, as it's going to be aimed towards the younger fans, uh, we've heard, but uh, you never know. <laughs> there's there's people out there who are going to play games for uh, whatever reason, as they like the franchise, like the characters, they're going to go f- try out the game, and uh, Pokemon will get to get their get their money for it. Uh, there's another game, um, Metroid Prime 4 is coming out, also it comes. it's going to be... Um, it was in the works uh for is in the works for the switch uh and then we got uh, all we got was the name and logo obviously during uh the e three last year um it will be the focus of last year but i mean obviously now we have super smash bros and everything of course when it, a mario thing comes out we gotta hold the phone for everything but uh this um prime game will look like it uh possibly gives a metroid prime four looks like probably we can get a twenty nineteen uh, launch window when it comes to that guy there uh, as uh, that one is something that we're going to still have to wait for here uh, a couple other games we have a racing game Star Fox as a series there's been some rumors coming out Star Fox Grand Prix um, in, in the works also for the Switch as uh, we're going to be getting uh, more and more things obviously the Switch is going to be crazy I think we're going to be getting all these RPGs on the Switch as well uh, as as uh, they it becomes <laughs> increasingly Comp- a bigger and bigger competitor for the Xbox and the PlayStation. All right, that'll wrap it up for the show today. Just to go over what we talked about, we did a lot of things. I didn't really. I wanted to get a little bit to laptops. I know that Intel has come out with some major advancements when it comes to their chips. So everybody, go look up, go look up what Intel's been doing. Uh, we'll, we'll probably get to that also on Thursday. We have more and more. We always have another thing to talk about on this uh, GSMC technology podcast. But uh, we have reached the end of the line here. No, today we did go over the WWDC down in San Jose yesterday. Talked about all the new things we're going to be seeing from the Apple 
the Apple iPhone and uh, what you can be doing on your iPads and on your MacBooks. You would have your iPad, uh, Apple apps on your on your MacBook now. Uh, what they're trying to <laughs> trying to save people from going away, or I don't, I don't I don't think they're really worried about it since they have the alternative. If you're not going to buy a two thousand dollar Mac, you can go buy the fifteen hundred dollar iPad. I mean, who? <laughs> Ooh, I don't think Apple really is worried about it, but uh, they've come out with some pretty cool stuff. Whether it's uh, increase uh, some improvements to Siri, uh, new meme emojis, uh, and improvements to the an emoji, uh, and then also you can have a 32 way phone call, a FaceTime call as well. So um, when that all is updated down in September, when we are available to download, everybody will get their alerts. I'm sure saying iOS 12 is here. You can upload upload it now. Do your however long it takes your phone to do it. Um, I don't know what the deal is as far as the compatibility with the some of the older phones. If they're going to be trying to get people to be pushed to buy new phones, uh, that still remains to be seen. But um, we'll probably be here to talk about it right along with you. So uh, we'll see everybody on Thursday. We'll be back for some more technology news. Until then, uh, I'm Tom Doherty. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.